Hello students, this is Professor C. A. Tanuja Bhati from Jain College of Engineering, Belgavi, Department of MBA. Today, we will be seeing revision lecture module on module 5, Introduction to Customs Duty. Under this module, as per VTU syllabus, it covers Introduction to Customs Duty, Circumstances of Levy of Customs Duty, Types of Duties, Exemption from Custom Duty, Valuation under Customs, that is valuation of imported goods, valuation of export goods. And on this, in this module, you just have problems on valuation of imported goods, which we have already covered in IT problems module 5 relating to valuation of imported goods. Today, we will be seeing the theory revision of module 5, introduction to customs duty. Now, what is the meaning of customs duty? Customs duty is duty that is payable on the goods that is either being imported or exported. So what is the levy of customs duty? Levy is nothing but there are three stages for imposition of taxes and duties. First stage is the levy stage. Levy stage is a stage where to declare the liability, declaration of the liability is made so that the duty and the tax can be levied and charged. Next is assessment where it is a procedure of quantifying what is going to be the amount of liability. And next is the final stage where the duty or tax is actually collected. So first levy, the liability is been identified. Second assessment where the liability is being quantified in terms of amount and third where that amount is being collected. So as per section 12, the customs duty is imported on goods and services, goods that are being imported or exported out of India. And at what rate the custom duty is being charged, it is specified under the Customs Tariff Act 1975. Next. Customs Tariff Act has the rates, but it has first two schedules, Schedule 1, which gives the rate of customs duty on imported goods, so that is called import tariff, and Schedule 2, it contains the rate, uh, contains the tariff rates for exported goods, so it is called export tariff. Now, what is import? Import means bringing into India from a place outside India and export means taking out of India to a place outside India. Now, let us see circumstances of levy of custom duty. Circumstances of levy of customs duty. So, section 12 says that customs Act makes it very clear that import and export of goods into or out of India is a taxable limit for the payment of customs duty because customs duty is, is levied only when the goods are imported or exported out of India. So let us see the taxable events for imported goods. Remember, the taxable event for the imported goods is only when the goods cross the custom barrier. When you're unloading the imported goods, it is not a taxable event. When the when the date of entry into when the any ship is entering into the Indian territorial water, it is not a taxable event. Or when the date you're presenting the bill of entry, it is not a taxable event. The taxable event is when the goods cross the customs barrier. Now, what is taxable event in case of warehouse goods? In case of warehouse goods, the taxable events are when the goods are removed from the warehouse for home consumption. Now, in case of export goods, what is going to be the taxable events? That is, when the goods taxable event arises only when the proper officer makes an order permitting clearance, that is granting the granting and loading of the goods for exportation takes place, then it is a taxable event. Now, what we have to see there are certain situations where the duty liability arises. So, first situation of goods are imported into India after exportation therefrom. Second is imported goods have been originally exported to the overseas suppliers for repairs and exported goods may come back for repairs and re-export. So let us understand the first circumstances. Circumstance 
that is goods are imported into india after exportation therefrom so first goods are exported from india and the same goods are imported again okay so the import duty shall be restricted to the amount of incentive availed at the time of export because in order to promote exports government of india gives various incentives so the rate of duty should be will be restricted only to the amount of incentive in situation where goods are imported into india from exportation therefrom next imported goods have been originally exported to the overseas supplier for repairs so no duty will be at the time of reimport will be levied if if that goods are reimported within 3 years from the date of export so if exported the goods and those goods are coming back for repairs so no duty will be levied third situation is exported goods may come back for repairs and re-export so no duty will be levied at the time of re-import provided the time limit of re-import should be within three years from the date of export the time for re-export is six months from the date of import and the re-importation of uh, is for reprocessing refining refinishing remaking then the uh, no duty of re-import will be levied that is the situation is the goods are first exported from india to usa then again they are imported back to india for some repairs refining remaking and then again the same goods are re-exported back to usa next types of customs duty there are two types of customs duty that is import duty and export duty import duty is as per the schedule 1 of the customs tariff act and export duty is as per the schedule 2 of the customs tariff act so under import duty you have bcd basic custom duty protective duty safeguard duty countervailing duty anti dumping duty igst and gst compensation cess under export duty you have duties on different uh, items such as de oiled rice brand oil cakes luggage uh, leather leather snake skins and furious waste scrap now you have to note that there is a social welfare charge that is charged on the imports it is charged at the rate of 10 percent of total customs duty so bcd suppose if it is 10 percent that is a general rate plus you will add 10 percent of 10 percent okay that is one so total effective customs duty will be 11 there is no education cess and secondary higher education cess to be charged on customs duty that you need to keep in mind now let us see individually what does each duty stand for basic custom duty is a standard rate of duty that has been charged okay and what is the rate of duty you will take the rate of duty at the time of bill of entry or the rate of duty at the time of entry inward of the vessel whichever is later that is the rate of bcd that you're going to charge it will be specified in the problem next is igst igst is nothing but earlier there was countervailing duty and special additional customs duty which is now being replaced by integrated goods and service tax so that is a rate that is being charged okay because you're importing it from outside india the same you could have manufactured in india so based on that to set off that there is an igst that has been charged gst compensation compensation says is been charged on all the luxury products like high end cars and demerit products like pan masala gutka tobacco protective duty is been charged in order to protect the interest of industry in india because people ex are exporting from outside uh, importing from outside india so in order to protect the indian industry safeguard duty is been charged it is not product set, uh, specific uh, sorry safeguard duty is product specific and it is imposed in order to safeguard the uh, some specified imported products which the central government may feel that once the central government is satisfied that such goods if they are being imported in large quantity may threaten that threaten that particular industry in domestic industry in india so to safeguard those industry safeguard duty is being levied provisional safeguard duty is being levied on the basis of determination of increased exports imports if sub imports are increasing through an higher end so 
provisional safeguard duty is to safeguard those industries which have been threatened that is domestic industries which are which which is seriously going to cause have a serious injury because of the imports countervailing duty is a duty that is levied on the goods that are being imported okay and it is a duty that is levied which is equal to the duty that could be charged if the same goods were manufactured or produced in india next you have is anti dumping duty anti dumping duty is a duty that is imposed on imports of a particular country because many a times what happens certain uh, goods are imported into india at the price which is less than the normal value at which it is been sold in india so the, such dumping happens and such dumping of goods happen in india with an idea to you know uh, in in an idea to put down the domestic industry so in order to avoid that there is anti dumping duty next is export duties now we know we have already seen there is a different export duty for different products have been charged now exemptions from import customs duty can be given through general exemption or special exemption general exemption is by notification in official gazette and special exemption where specially there can be uh, which are uh, in those situations in exceptional cases those circumstances special exemption can be granted to exempt certain payment of duty on goods next valuation under customs so we know that already we have seen this we have covered this when we are solving the it problems uh, video lecture relating to it problems so valuation of imported and exported goods we know that there is a transaction value which you have to take as a value of imported goods otherwise you have to take a tariff value tariff value is to be taken in these goods which is crude plum oil crude palomin crude soybean oil brass scrap poppy seeds in these cases you have to take tariff value tariff value is nothing but a value that is already fixed by the central government and transaction value means the price actually paid or payable for the goods at a place of import or export but where parties are not related and price is the sole consideration so there is a valuation rule for imported goods valuation rules for export goods so there are total 13 rules under for valuation of imported goods so rule number 1 says that customs duty uh, rules 2017 sorry 2007 speaks about determination of value of imported goods rule 2 says that there are certain definitions that are refined under rule 2 that is what is the relative what is transaction value computed value rule 3 says that transaction value should be taken at as an assessable value only when the buyer and seller are not related and price is a sole consideration then this format is already discussed in my video lecture relating to problems now transaction value of identical goods suppose if you are not able to find out the uh, value identical goods first of all means what which are similar in all the aspects okay like in the quantity physical quantity in all respects they are similar so this method is applicable only when the following conditions are fulfilled that is identical goods can be compared with other goods of the same country from which import takes place and these goods must be valued at a price which is produced by the same manufacturer the price is not available then the price of other manufacturer of the same country is to be taken into account and if more than one identical good is available lowest of such value should be taken so suppose if you are not able to find out the transaction value then you need to take the transaction value of identical goods similar goods rule 5 which says that although they are not same in all the respects okay you have to uh, but they have to be character they have to have characteristics or components which enable to per enable them to perform the same functions and they can be used interchangeably so the valuation means you have to take the value of the similar goods if the value of identical goods is not available so the difference is goods must be same in all the respects in case of identical similar they should have characteristics components and same functions like you have the difference here 
next you have to follow this rules in order only first you have to take the value as a transaction value if transaction value is not available then you have to take the value of identical goods if that is not available take the value of similar goods then determination of value change of order rules if the value of imported goods cannot be determined as per rule 3 4 5 then it should be determined as per rule 7 and if not rule 8 rule 7 says that you have to use deductive value method now in deductive value method how we will find the value what you have to do by reducing the post importation cost and expenses from the selling price from selling price if you minus the post importation cost and expenses you will get the accessible value on which you can charge import duty next is computed value computed value is where you have to add these three items you will get the value that is cost of materials to that you add the profit of the exporter add all the expenditures you will get accessible value next is residual method residual method uh, is also called as best judgment method and in this method the value cannot exceed the normal price at which they are ordinarily sold so the re residual method is you select your own best method uh, be best value and such value should not exceed the normal price next is cost of services cost of services rule 10 which says that suppose if cost of transportation is not given you need to take cost of transport as 20 percent of fob if insurance is not given you need to take 1.125 percent of fob and if fob value is not given you can take it as cif minus cost of transportation minus insurance next rule 11 which says that declaration by importer so the importer shall declare the value and furnish all the documents to the proper officer and rejection of declared value whatever value is declared by the importer if the proper officer feels that it is not appropriate he may reject it and interpretive notes means your interpretive uh, interpretive notes is nothing but it is an explanation to all the rules is given under rule number 13 valuation of export goods on the similar lines we have valuation of export goods there is only theory for you in relation to valuation of export goods so it covers rule number one to eight so rule number one again says that uh, under export goods says that uh, rule number one shall apply only to export goods rule number two has all the definitions in it rule number three says the determination of the method of valuation should be taken as a transaction value next rule number four says that determination of export value by comparison like if transaction value is not available you have to take the transaction value of like kind and quality same products as the accessible value then computed value method Still, if you are not able to determine, you can use rule 5 computed value method which says that you have to take value as add this 3 that is cost of production, charges if any and the amount of profit. Then residual method where you have to take the value based on any reasonable means consistent with all the provisions and principles relating to export and on, on that basis you can determine the value of export goods. Rule 7 that declaration of the exporter, the exporter has to declare and furnish the value of export goods that is exporting. Next is rejection of declared value. The proper officer may reject the value that has been declared by the exporter. Presently the export duty is only on these products which I have already told. Next is refund of export duty. Refund of export duty is permissible only in this below uh, conditions are fulfilled that is goods are re-imported within one year from the date of export or if these goods are not for resale and re refund claim is lodged within six months from the date of clearance by custom officer for re-importation so if all these conditions are fulfilled then only refund of export duty can take place so by this we have completed the revision of module 5 that is introduction to customs duty so thank you we have completed the revision of module 5 thank you so much